Good afternoon, guys. <clears throat> Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon, guys. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, Miss Portia, how are you doing? How are you guys? Long time no see. Hello. <clears throat> Been waiting on me, I know. I was over here playing. <laughs> but I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight and try to I'm gonna try to stay constant all the month of February. That's my goal. Hey Keisha, how are you? <clears throat> and that's my goal to be um consistent through the month of February. There are so many things and so many issues that God has been dealing with me personally on the matters of the heart. So matters of the heart all came from God dealing with the issues of my heart. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna share, you know. I'm like the big sister. If you can, uh, you know how the sisters, they try to make sure you don't get the same whooping that they get. So I'm going to try to help y'all out so y'all don't get the same whooping, the same spanking that God gave me, right? Um, so, yeah. And that's why we're here. But God is really, the other night I had a dream um, about idolatry and that one, the matters of the heart, the things that we idol and stuff. So I'm still doing some um, some study on that part. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So we have a lot of different um, <clears throat> a lot of different things. Last time we talked about gossip. Tonight we're going to talk about pride. Then there's self-righteousness. There is judgment, um, righteous judgment versus, you know, just judging. Because the Bible does tell us to judge righteously. It's just the way that we have to learn how to judge righteously. So we're going to talk about that one. We're going to talk about... Condemnate, condemnation versus conviction, how our lifestyles should not um, condemn anyone, but we should live in such a way that it brings conviction to people. You know, it, it our lifestyle brings conviction, but we shouldn't condemn, right? We should live such a way that people really ask about who is the God that you serve. So God is really just working with me, dealing with my heart, matters of the heart. So that's the title of this series, Matters of the Heart. Um, I do believe still the word of the Lord that he gave me for 2024 was a year of elevation. And we prayed through that the month of January. We did a 21 days of prayer and fasting. Let me turn this heater off. It's got a little spicy. <laughs> Um, we did a 21 day fast, fasting and prayer through the month of January and, um, though on, on elevation, reading the story of Joseph, um, as that, as our target scripture and how God gave us the revelation, how Joseph was elevated from a prisoner to second in command for the purpose of helping the nation get ready to plan and prepare for a famine that was coming, a seven-year famine. So I do believe that elevation is still going to help, but I do believe I come, but God wants to deal with the issues of our heart prior to us being elevated, right? Being elevated or um, or being exposed for the right reasons and then have to turn around and be exposed for the wrong reasons, right? And so I am the type, like God deal with me on the level now where don't nobody know my name, just deal with me now. And make sure my prayer is always out of Psalms 24, um, that I have clean hands and a pure heart because it says, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, right? And so you're not standing in the place of God. You're not in his presence when you don't have clean hands and a pure heart. And how do you obtain clean hands and a pure heart? You do that by way of repentance and by forgiveness is the top two that God has revealed to me always making sure that you're repenting and um, you're forgiving people. You have clean hands and a pure heart. So a few weeks ago, you know, we had this whole found kind of family argument between me and one of my brothers, and it was just a mess. A lot of it was based on 
some things that I said. And so I took it. I took everything that I did. I take the responsibility for what I did. And so I'm not going to like try to get out of anything. Everything that was said was not true. But however, like I told y'all about gossip, then the last teaching, if you missed the last teaching on gossip, you can go to my YouTube page and find that one. But because I had entertained it and, and jumped into it and had something to say, there was no way of defending it, right? And so I talked about just the different things that it can cause. You know, it tears down families. It tears apart. You know, as it, it ruins someone's reputation and things like that. So we talked a good deal about pride. And this is really how all of this came up because the person that... Um, uh, I just kind of really didn't care for it. I guess just let me put it like that. You know, I just try to be transparent and honest. Ain't no use to faking, right? You know, and I think sometimes us being Christians, we try to sugarcoat or try to fake who we really are. And the fact is, is that we, there's people that we don't like and there's people that we don't care for. Um, but that does not make me less of a woman of God. However, the way you handle things will get you definitely in trouble with the heavenly father. Right. And so you just want to make sure you handle things right. So the person that I really didn't have, didn't really care for, right. Uh, telling me basically how they feel. And I'm, you know, I'm feeling it. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I didn't like it. It didn't feel good. However, I have put myself in this position. Not only that, I knew before going into the conversation how it was going to go down because the spirit of the Lord let me know. He said, agree with your adversary quickly. And this is not going to go as you think, you know, or as you had hoped it's going to go. This was and it was bad. It was real bad. But anyway, to get to the point, this person is telling me that um, I'm prideful, I'm self-righteous, um, I'm judgmental. Some other words, too, that they use, I wish I could have recorded it, not just because um, I wanted to have it, but just for me, just so I can always refer back to that moment when God exposed my heart. And so this is what I am taking this as, is that that exposure hit my heart. It, it was about, you know, us having a family conversation. And try, hey, guys, I'm live. I'm live. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was. A, Sorry. It, um, it's a, it wasn't. It, I lost my train of thought. It wasn't about. um me um it wasn't about the the whole family conversation it was but then it wasn't it was really god doing some spiritual things in me letting me see how ugly my heart was do you hear what i'm saying like god you're you're the one doing a 21 day prayer and fast and let me tell y'all something when you are fasting and you are asking god to show you you that's exactly what he does you cannot tell me that you are praying and you are seeking God and you are asking him to give you clean hands and a pure heart and you get up out of the place of prayer. You stay the same. It's impossible. It's impossible if you're praying to the almighty God. It's impossible if you're speaking to the heavenly father. It's impossible if you're calling on the name of Jesus. It's impossible if you're leaning on, relying on the Holy Spirit. It's impossible if you are acknowledging God in all of your ways for you to go into a place of prayer and he never shows you you. I'm just telling you, that's just impossible. It's just not going to happen. It's impossible for you to see everything wrong with everyone else except you. That's one of the things that God showed me too. how, which I like, I don't think that I'm perfect by any means necessary. I, there are some things that I see in myself and I recognize like, okay, yeah, you need to deal with that. But some of the stuff that was called out, I did not realize how ugly that was in my heart. I didn't know y'all. I'm telling you the, when the scripture says that the heart is deceitfully wicked, who can know it? That that's the type of God only you knew that it was that bad. Like I didn't have that revelation. I had not physically seen myself in that way until it was being told to me. And then God opened my eyes to see, yeah, that's you. That's you. The woman that's praying, the woman that's fasting, the woman that's teaching, that, that's you. Full of pride, that's you. Full of self-righteousness, that's you. Gossiping, that's you. Tearing down, you know, others, that's you. All because you feel some type of way, right? And so, and it's okay 
to, uh, to feel some type of way, but let take your feelings to God. And I talked about that in the last live that I did. Take your feelings, take your feelings, your assumptions, your presumptions, your judgments, take it all to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the only one that knows all things. I don't care how much you, even if for the people that you like, take them to God. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. Acknowledge him in your feelings. Acknowledge him in everything. He is the only one that knows all things about everyone. He's the only one that knows the intent of a man's heart and a, a, the man's thoughts. God is the only one. So even when you feel some type of way about a person, right? Because sometimes that's just the spirit of discernment. God gives us the, the gift of discerning of spirits, right? And so you have that. And I'm not saying ignore what you discern or what you feel, right? I'm saying, take it to God. You don't take it to anybody else. I don't care who they are. And like I told you on the last one, you sure don't take it to anyone that's not filled with the Holy Spirit, period, period. Any conversation that you're having with anyone that is not filled with the Holy Spirit is automatically gossip, period. I don't care if you in venting with a person. I don't care if you venting about the person, venting about the situation, venting about the, the circumstance. When you, when you are discussing a situation or an issue that with someone who is not filled with the Holy Spirit, it immediately turns into the place of gossip, period. And venting is gossip. It is like the definition that I have. I don't have my notes up from that one. I don't think I have them over here. <clears throat> It's, it's, um, expressing your venting is expressing your frustration about a person or a situation. Gossip is maliciously tearing down a person, right? And so I wouldn't necessarily say that I did stuff like that. However, I just did some things that shouldn't have been done, period, period. So you have a person that you don't really care for and the God, the God is using this person to reveal who you are. Period. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? That God will use a person that you don't care for to reveal to you how ugly your heart is. You know what I'm saying? Baby, I had to take that like a big girl. I had to take that whooping baby and just take it to God in prayer and be like, dang. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I still give God all the praise all the glory because he hears my prayers concerning my heart, right? Because I don't want to be the one, and I don't have that scripture tonight where it says that you must buffet your body like a boxer, an athlete, or somebody, right? Lest you be a castaway, lest I teach you guys all of this, but I don't discipline myself, I don't discipline my tongue. I don't discipline my ways. Hey, brother, I don't discipline my actions. I don't discipline my attitude. I don't apply the word that I'm teaching you to my own life. And therefore, I become a castaway to this. That's a terrible place to be. That's a terrible place to be, to, to, um, to give out, to pour, to encourage, to, to lift up, to, to prophesy, to teach the word of God. And then you yourself become a castaway because you yourself didn't apply what you are learning, what you are studying. You didn't make, you didn't discipline yourself in the word. You didn't make the word applicable to your life. Basically what you did was take something to, oh, this is good. This is going into pride, right? To teach others but you didn't take it for yourself right that's how that pride comes in that's how that several righteousness comes in because you're really not applying it you're you're not applying it for yourself again i always say um thank you miss portia i always say um let's let's read it <clears throat> first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 He says, and this is the KJV, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest I by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I, and then the Amplified Classic Version says, I love this one. It says, but like a boxer, I buffet my body. 
I handle it roughly, disciplining it by hardships, and I subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and the things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test to be approved and rejected as a counterfeit. That, I mean, no. And so when you are not living this word. Literally, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. And so, again, I didn't intentionally, like, I, I don't walk around intentionally. I didn't see the pride. I didn't see the self-righteousness. So it wasn't my intent that, oh, this is, you know, I'm just this, this woman of God. I'm just this, I'm just that. No, but it's in my actions and the things, how conversations that I have and how I treat people, um, where those things were lying that you didn't visibly see. Like, so it wasn't like where you can just see somebody's prideful and self-righteous. Like they proclaim it like the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It wasn't like that, but it was subtly. It was in your actions. Actions. It was in your conversations. It was in how you perceive and how you understand and, and the, uh, about others. It was there. And so God had to bring it to my light. He had to bring it to my face to say, hey, these are the issues that I need you to come to me about. You know, I know you did this 21 day fast for, for, for elevation, but in that, I, I needed to show you these things because all of this was revealed to me the last day of the fast. Ain't that powerful? That's what I'm saying. You cannot, you cannot pray and you cannot say you're seeking God and you go on these fasts and he don't show you you. This was revealed. So the next fast that I do and, and all of that, the things that I have been praying and asking God for, you better believe that these are on the list. Like Every single day. I mean, in the morning, as soon as I wake up, during the afternoon when I think about it, and definitely before I lay my head down, I'm in a place of repentance. God, if I said anything today, God, if I did anything today, God, if I judged somebody unrighteously, God, if I spoke negative about somebody, God, if I was, a, a, if there was any pride in my heart, any self righteousness, God just keeps revealing it to me and showing it to me. Listen, I am not playing. Even when I, even conversations in my house with my kids and with my mom and them, I am so careful. I watch. I don't. I, I don't got nothing to say. I just watch what I say. I I just don't have nothing to say at this point because God is dealing with me, and I'm not ever going to put myself in a situation like that again. I'm not gonna ever consciously put myself like knowing after that whooping, you ain't got to worry about me. You ain't got to worry about me. You ain't got to worry about it, God. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to pray that God keep a guard over my mouth. I am going to, I'm not going to um, discount or discredit the gift of discernment. However, me and the Holy Ghost going to talk about it. Not me and anybody else. I don't care who you are. I ain't even talking to my husband about it until I talk to the Holy Ghost about it. I'm not talking to nobody about what I discern in my spirit until I talk to Jesus. To, to me and the Holy Ghost have a conversation, right? And then, and only then, if he gives me revelation or something to reveal it, permission to reveal it, is when I reveal it. But if he don't, he don't give me permission, I'm just going to say it is what it is. And God, you reveal it whenever you want to reveal it or do whatever. Just show me what I need to do to either keep moving in that direction or move in a different direction. Keep allowing that person in my life or move that person out of my life. Just show me what I need to do with the information that you just gave me. But as far as me discussing it with anybody, you ain't got to worry about that one. No more. Period. You ain't got to do it. Okay? All right. So, pride. That, that's a big one. That's an ugly one. That's a nasty one. That is one of the things that the Lord hates, that it is an abomination to him. So in the concordance, Strong's concordance says, the word means haughtiness, arrogance, um, and this a disdainful attitude towards others. I can see all of this was in me, girl. I mean, all y'all. I mean, I could just see it. 
I could see all of this. It is the state of appearing to be superior towards others. So, uh, it was is having an attitude, a superior attitude towards others. So sometimes, you know, like I said, we don't walk around thinking like we all of that. Like I just know I'm all of that. It's not that. This is for the Christians. This is for the ones that believe in Jesus Christ. Pride in this manner is looking down on people. Let me just say this is what God showed me, revealed to me in my heart. Looking down or having a superior attitude with those that don't believe like you believe. With those who have a different faith. Even if they're antichrist. Even if they don't believe in Jesus. If they are Catholic. If they are Muslim. That is pride. That, that's the type of pride that God has shown me. When they don't have, you have a superior at, or, or, or a thought or a disdainful attitude towards a different type of belief because they don't believe like you believe. So you feel like or you or it appears to be that you are better than them because you believe in Jesus. It's not the pride that, oh, I got all of this money, you know, because, you know, people have pride in different areas, right? People have pride in different areas. So you, you have pride of people that have material things, materialistic. We're prideful. You have pride of people with their looks, right? They just know they look good or whatever. You know, they're, they're prideful. They take pride, like little, little sinful pride in that, right? Not saying that you shouldn't take pride in who you are because you don't want to be walking around looking busted either. But there is this pride that because you don't believe like I believe, I got the 411 on all the Holy Ghost and you don't. You have no idea how big God is. You can't even fathom the things of God and, and what he's doing and what he's saying, right? And so this is the type of pride because that because they don't believe like you believe. You have a disdainful attitude towards them. Right? You have pride because you know Jesus. You have pride because you speak in tongues. I'm going to help us tonight. You have pride because you know the scriptures. You, you're prideful, Christy, is what the Lord was saying. Because they don't believe like you believe. Hi, Yasmin. Your name is beautiful. That's my daughter's name. <clears throat> you understand? You take pride in your belief as a Christian. And God has said, I'm, I'm coming for that. It's okay that you are a believer. It's okay that you believe in Jesus. It's okay that you proclaim it to the rooftops. It's okay that everybody know that you serve Jesus with all of your heart, with all of your, with all of your might, with all of your might. It's okay to boast in the Lord, right? It's okay. But it's not okay to have a disdainful or a haughtiness or arrogance because Jesus is your Lord. And Buddha might be somebody else's Lord. It's not okay. Because again, when we get to that conviction versus condemnation, your life will be a testimony to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your life will testify. Jesus, there is a way that we, we show love. And what do I mean by that? Not... Not sugarcoating and accept everything, right? Because you don't want to do that either. You got to know how to balance it. So it's important to have the Holy Spirit. You got. You don't want to just, oh, God is love, whatever. You know, let them do whatever. No, especially if the Lord is calling you to cry loud and spare not. You got to say what you got to say, right? Because if you don't, the blood is going to be on your hands. However, 
You can't walk around with the arrogance, kind of like how the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. They knew the book of the law. When you read the gospel, they always challenged Jesus, well, you know, with the law. They, they knew it. They were prideful in that. They never had any humility to say, like, this man really can teach us something. This man is really the Christ, the Messiah, right? And so we have to make sure that because just because we proclaim Jesus and we cry loud and we spare not and we speak in tongues and we lay hands on the sick and they recover and we preach the gospel and, and demons come out and we fast and we pray and God heal, hears and he performs things and he does miracles and he answers our prayers. We don't get prideful in that. We don't become prideful. Proverbs 6, 16, and 17. He said, these six things the Lord hates. Indeed, seven are an abomination to him. Number one, a proud look. The spirit that makes one overestimates himself and underestimate others. I'm going to say that again. A proud look. The spirit that makes one overestimate himself and other and underestimate others. This is the area of pride I'm dealing with. So this is where I'm going to stay right here. But I'm pretty sure you get your own revelation for any area of pride that you're dealing with. Your procla proclaiming Jesus Christ should never have you overestimating yourself and underestimating someone who does not. And, and wait a minute, wait a minute, because there are some of us where we overestimate ourselves and underestimate our brothers and sisters in Christ. They're not, they not of the same denomination. Uh, they don't believe in speaking in tongues. Some of them still don't believe in women pastors or preachers, but hey, it, it ain't my business. Um, we still going to be out here doing what we need to do. However, should never give me the right to overestimate myself and underestimate them for, for what they believe. Do you hear what I'm saying? It doesn't give me the right to underestimate them in the body as believers or of a different faith or of a different race even if they don't believe it don't give me the right just because I know Jesus right as believers because the scripture says that he wished that none perish and so one of the things that God showed me is that as believers and especially those who have the call of ministry to like really, really pray and intercede, it should like grieve your heart when you run into people that don't believe in Jesus, right? And it shouldn't be a debate because, you know, I'm not here to debate with anybody. Anybody jump on here. I'm not going to debate with you about what you believe, why you believe it, why you don't believe it. If you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe in Jesus. I'm not here to debate that. However, my life should speak so well of Jesus Christ that you want to know who he is. That you want to be like, tell me more. How did you get to know Jesus? And in my conversation with you, it should never go to a place of pride, arrogance, haughtiness, self-righteous, or condemnation. Never. Never. I should always be able to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way in love that brings conviction and compels you to him. The scripture says, with loving kindness, have I drawn you with loving kindness? Have I drawn thee? And you want to know why some of our family members and um, co-workers and all of that, they don't want to serve the God that we serve because of our attitudes because of our haughtiness, because of us feeling more 
uh, overestimating ourselves and underestimating them. Because they don't believe. Or because some of it could be just they they not ready to uh, come in. They enjoy their life of sin. Because if we be honest, our lives of sin wasn't always terrible. The life of sin was good. Some of us wish we could go back to some of the stuff that we did. It wasn't terrible out there in the sin world. It wasn't terrible out there in them sin streets, right? It wasn't terrible. It wasn't always bad out there. And another thing that God had to deal with me, is still dealing with me, is your conviction, even with other believers, even in your church, in your home, in your family, your conviction is not the same as other people's conviction. <coughs> what I am convicted about, you may not be convicted about, and that does not give me a right to judge you or to take pride in my conviction is a little bit more deeper than yours. Not by at all. My conviction may not be your conviction. Your conviction may not be mine. But it doesn't make me any better or less than you. Doesn't make the person any less than you. Now, with that being said, because I know we like to say, I'm just human. Ain't nobody perfect. There are some things that as believers, I'm talking to the believers, there's a standard to. There's a standard. When I say your conviction may not be my conviction, let me break it down like this so y'all won't, you know, this is free reign for me to just walk out here and sleep with somebody's husband because you, you don't got free reign to do that. You don't got free reign to do that. Your, my conviction to pray every morning at 4 a.m. may not be your conviction. But that don't make me better than you. Your conviction to pray at midnight may not be my conviction. My conviction to watch horror movies and other type of movies when I know they're doing demonic stuff. That may not be your conviction, but it definitely is mine. You ain't going to catch me watching demonic stuff. You ain't going to catch me watching horror movies. That's my personal conviction and also a preference of mine because I am a dreamer. And I hate having nightmares. And anytime I watch a horror movie or any type of demonic activity, it's almost guaranteed that I'm going to have nightmares. And I don't do nightmares and I don't do night terrors. Can't stand them. Can't stand them. Not so. It's a conviction of mine and it's also a preference though. I'm not going to do that. Right? Your conviction on how you eat, which all of us should have a some type of conviction for this one, may not be on the same level though. Right? So when I say that, I mean there are different things and, and things that God is calling us to in different levels. However, it never gives me the right to overestimate myself and uh, underestimate someone else. Because I can get up and pray at 4 in the morning. Or I can pray at midnight until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, right? Or I can bring the word of God. Or whatever the case may be. So, and, and other things... We should all have a conviction about. We should have a conviction about our mouth, what comes out of them, how we say things, what we talk about, who we talk about. We should have a conviction about gossip. You should have a conviction about a lying tongue. You should have a conviction about feet being quick to run towards evil, to shed innocent blood, to, to disfame or demoralize or mess up somebody's reputation. You should have a conviction about messing up somebody's home, somebody's marriage, whether that's with your mouth or you messing with somebody's spouse. You should have a conviction about these things. You should be in a place of repentance and asking God for mercy. All of us should have a conviction about that pride, arrogance, um, overeating. 
idols, self-righteousness. There are some, some things that all of us should have a conviction about it. Now, this is the thing. Your level of where you are with it may be different from mine. You know, you may struggle more heavier in a different area of disciplining, you know, your flesh than I do with pride. You may be struggling with, you know, a sexual sin. I don't know. Deal with it. Just because I ain't out here spreading wide and sleeping with every, you know, person that come my way does not give me the right to overestimate myself and underestimate the person that is. That's good. Just because I'm not doing it. Because guaranteed, I'm not out here in these streets. I'm not out here wilding out. But the way God showed me my heart the other day, shoot, I don't know. I might as well be out there wilding out with them. Literally. All that pride, all that self-righteousness, all that arrogance, all that haughtiness, all that judgment, all of that gossiping that God showed me. Yeah, you sitting right next to him. You just doing yours in a different way. You just doing yours in a different way. So, you don't ever have the right to overestimate yourself and underestimate someone else. Listen, because you can see their sin, because you can see with your eyes. However, you can't see what's in you. You can't you can't get that that law. You can't you can see that speck in their eye, but you can't come get that log out of yours. The log of pride, the law, the log of gossiping, the log of having a lying tongue, the log of um self-righteousness, the log of judgment, but you can see that speck of fornication, of adultery, of alcoholism, or of whatever. You, you, you can see that. You can see the witchcraft. You can see all of that, but you can't see the log in your eye. Pride. Don't, don't, don't overestimate yourself and don't underestimate anybody else. It's a never meet mind frame for real. But it's all of us, okay? All of us. I want to go to Mark chapter 7, verse 20. Mark chapter 7, verse 20. This is the Amplified Classic Version as well. We're going to read down to 23. Mark chapter 7, verse 20 through 23. And he said, what comes out of a man is what makes a man unclean and renders him unhollow. What come out of, of a man. And there's a scripture, and I don't think I put it in my notes, that says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what comes out of the man renders him unhollow or makes him unclean. For, for from within, that is out of our hearts of men come Base and wicked thoughts, sexual immorality, stealing, murder, adultery, coveting, dangerous and destructive wickedness, deceit, <clears throat> um, unrestrained contact, conduct, an evil eye or envy, slander, evil speaking, malicious misinterpretation, abusiveness, Pride, the sin of an uplifted heart against God and man, foolishness, folly, lack of sense, recklessness, thoughtlessness, all these evil purposes and desires come from within and they make the man unclean and render him unhollow. So all of this matters of the heart. This is, this is what we are basing matters of the heart because really these are the things that this is what defiles us. This is what makes us unclean. These are the matters of the heart that God wants to deal with. The, uh, the King James Version says, 
verse 20. And he said that which cometh out of a man that defileth the man from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Not what you, what you look like, how you look. Remember, it says don't judge by appearance, but judge according to righteous judgment. And so that's what was getting me in trouble too is because you're looking at the outward of appearance of man and you're not looking on the inside because it's not what defiles the man that's on the outside of them. It's not even what defiles the man that goes on the inside. If you go up a little bit, uh, what they put in, <clears throat> if you go up, he says, verse 18 says, and he said unto them, are ye so without understanding also, do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entered into the man, it cannot defile him because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly and goeth out into the drought, purging all meat. So basically it's like whatever you put in your mouth is going to go through your stomach, through your belly, basically after your bowels, cleaning you out. So it's not what you are putting in. Is what you are allowing to come out of you. And God is saying, these are the things that I want, which we have all of these things for matters of the heart. This is for y'all to go study whatever matters of the heart, really, that God wants to deal with you on 20 through 23, Mark 7 to 23. It gives you a whole list of them that you can break down these words and ask God for healing, ask God for deliverance, because these are the things that he's coming from, because these are the things that defile us, make us unclean. Is what comes out of us, that pride coming up out of you, the haughtiness, the attitude, the arrogant words, thinking that you're better because you serve Jesus and they might be a Catholic. Or they may be an atheist or they may be, you know, Buddhist, whatever. They may not be a believer at all, whatever. I don't know what you believe. They might worship the stars, the universe, the moons, whatever. It, it doesn't give me a right to be prideful, though, because of that, right? Let's see. Proverbs 16, 18 through 19. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. All the time. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So anytime you see where life has taken you into a destructive place or anytime you see or you can pinpoint, dang, I fell hard right here. Can almost probably guarantee it, chop it up to being prideful or haughtiness. Anytime destruction happens in your life personally, or anytime there's a fall that occurs, Proverbs 16, 18 through 19, it's because of pride. Pride goeth before the fall. It means it's going. You have pride before God allows the destruction to come. You have a haughty spirit before God allows the fall to come, right? So the destruction occurred between me and my brother's relationship. Pretty sure God tried to show me before, because it says pride goes before the destruction. Before this came, before the fall, I'm pretty sure God was somewhere and saying, hey, be quiet. Hey, come here. But because sometimes we feel so strongly in our hearts, in our emotions, in our ways about something, we will neglect to hear God. And we will neglect to see your wrongdoing in a situation because of pride. In Job, where was I reading that yesterday? 41. Job 41 talks about Leviathan. Leviathan is 
is a is a like creature that they talk about in the Bible. It describes him in Job 41. And it talks about how he's covered in these scales. It also says that Leviathan is the uh what do it say? Hold on, let me because I want I want y'all know I like to tell y'all the truth. Something about the children of pride, but I want to make sure I say it right. I don't want to just put it out there. Yeah, he be Leviathan in, in Job 41, 34. He beholdeth all things and he is the king over all the children of pride. I said this to say because Leviathan is one if you read this chapter it talks about how how he he's created he's a creature right a sea creature and you can you get this out with hooks the the bible he god's asking no you can't he has scales basically to protect him and so there are some things when you are so wrapped up in pride about an issue about a circumstance about a person that you can't penetrate, God can't penetrate what he needs to penetrate for you to see the pride, to show you the pride. And it says this, this creature, Leviathan, he is the king over all the children of pride. You become a servant to Leviathan when you are not a child to Leviathan, really, because it says he's a king over all the children of pride, all the children. You become a child or, or a servant to the king of Leviathan. Job 41, 34. Right. And so I said that to say, because as the Bible describes this creature, it talks about how he has these scales and how thick his skin is and all of this, that sometimes that pride is so thick and we have so much scales that we fail to see what God is trying to show us about a situation. We can't see it. We are so thick that we can't see. He can't penetrate it. The hooks can't go through it. Just God ain't getting to you. And so what has to happen? Destruction or fall has to occur. Destruction or fall has to occur. So anytime you can pinpoint or anytime you see, man, that was terrible. That was a horrible fall. That was destruction. Ask God, where was the pride? Where was I lacking? Where did I miss it? Where was I prideful? Because pride goes before the destruction. Pride, haughtiness comes before the fall. Period. Period. Proverbs 21 and 4. A haughty look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked are sin. It's just, it's just that. It, it's just sin. And so God is saying, I want to deal with these things. These are some of the things I was doing a little research <clears throat> and found some things. Different ways pride can exalt itself or manifest itself. That's the one I'm looking for. Different ways that pride and man itself. The first one is self-exaltation. You give credit to yourself. Exaltation. And Ephesians 2 and 9. Go. <clears throat> All right, let's go to eight. Verse, Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good work, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. So pride brings self-exaltation. When Ephesians 2 tell us it's not, it's according to his grace that we're even saved. So remember I told you that um, because you believe something different or I was, you know, I was thinking of myself basically more highly than I ought to or exalting myself or overestimating myself and underestimating someone else because of their beliefs or how they believe right. It's by his grace that he chose me. 
Because the scripture says that we are born into iniquity. So I came into the world as a sinner. Only by his grace that he decide to save me and bring me into the knowledge of who Jesus was. So I can't take no credit for anything. I don't care how saved I am and how unsaved you are. I by his grace, it's by his grace that I'm still not out there doing any and everything. It's by his grace that I'm not in a mental hospital. It's by his grace that I'm not in prison. They ain't kill nobody. It's by his grace. By his grace that I ain't strung out on drugs somewhere. I tried a few. By his grace that I'm not an alcoholic. It's by his grace. It's not by the works. He says, verse 9, not of works lest any man should boast. You can't boast in this. You can't take, you can't self-exalt yourself. Period. Even in... If, if, if it ain't got nothing to do with religion in your business, it's by his grace, whether you believe it or not, that you are where you are in your career, in your job, as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife. In my prayer this morning, when I was praying, one of the things that I was thanking God for is that he gave me the capacity to love my children the way I love them. And why do I thank God for that? Because there are some parents that they sell their children. There are some parents that beat their children. There are some parents that literally hate their children. And as a mom, I can't imagine it. I, I just can't imagine it. But I was thanking God for the grace that he gave me to care, love, be tender, be loving, touchable, teachable to my children. Like, I just love them. Like, it. it it, 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 you can, it, it's something that can't be forced, right? And so just things like that, even that's by his grace. Even that's by his grace that he gave me the grace to be a good mother. He gives me the grace to be a good wife. And trust me, I still fall in the areas. I still slack in the areas. But I'm just grateful. And look at this. Even though it makes you mad when you like you really want to beat somebody up when you see that they didn't abuse a child or sold a child. Like those are like fighting words to me. Like you did what? Like how? How can you give this young man over or this young girl over to feed your crack addiction? How, or how can you starve them? Or, or how can you beat them? Or how can you abuse them? How? But it doesn't give me the right to overestimate myself as a good mom and underestimate them. It doesn't justify their behavior. But when I'm dealing with pride, I got to be careful. I got to be careful. Because God gave me the grace to love my children. That whatever mentally, psychology, whatever psychologically is wrong with this person... That will make them hurt theirs. I can't. Exalt myself. Take credit for it. Because it ain't by any works. How good I am as a mom. That I can even boast in that. I love them even when they don't deserve it. Just like Christ. Yeah. I love mine. I I, I mean. My, my kids will tell you. I have. All girls, one boy. My girls, I don't like you. You would think like they would be like daddy's girls. They're all mama girls. Every last one of them. They know they can get anything out of mom. My son too. But they know if they want something, just go to mama. Go to mama. And most of the time, mama gonna do it. If they need to go somewhere and need pick up something. Then they can go to the daddy because I ain't pretty much probably ain't going to leave the house. Like, go tell your daddy to do it. He'll take you to Walmart, whatever you need to do. But anything else, like, we out and about. He, and he always tell me, you got them too spoiled, but they're mine. They're mine. And if I got it, they have whatever they want. You know? 
So, I said that to say, it doesn't give us anything that we do. It's not by our works, whether that's your business, whether that's in ministry, whether that's your career, whether that's you as a parent, as a wife, as a husband, as a sibling, as, you know, a boss, as a manager, that you get to boast because it's by grace, it's by his grace that he put you in the position. It's by his grace that he saved you. It's by his grace that he anointed you. It's by his grace that he chose you. It's by his grace that he favored you. It's by his grace that he blessed you. It's by his grace that he give you the wisdom to manage money, multiply money. It's by his grace that he give you the power to become wealthy. It's by his grace That you can love the way you love. On borrowed time, so I make sure I give them all the time. Yes, ma'am. For real. I do. Okay? So, we got to remember that. So, pride is self-exaltation. Let me move through these real quick because it's already about to be eight. Self-promotion. Pride comes when we receive or welcomes credit from others. Self-promotion. Um... Again, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, or yeah, 8 through 10, we can't self-promote, we can't boast in it, everything that we have comes from God, whether we want to believe it or not. When we try to self-justify, um, I, I did a post the other day when I said, that our I am human doesn't excuse us or give us a pass to keep sinning. I'm human. We, we, I get it. We are human and we make mistakes, but it's not a, a free pass to keep you from sinning. You can't self justify that. I'm human doesn't give you a free pass to continue to be ugly. I'm human doesn't give you a free pass to keep walking in sexual immorality or perversion. I'm human doesn't give you a free pass to just keep cussing folks out. Are you a believer? Is Jesus your Lord? You can't self-justify this. He justifies us, right? He makes it as if whatever we done, like it never was done. However... We can't keep self-justifying. Well, oh, I'm human. I'm not perfect. We all make mistakes. We do. We're not perfect. We're not. We're human. We are. That is not a free pass to justify or self-justify your sin, your error, your fault. Yeah, say, I am guilty. I did it. I messed up. Period. It's not, I messed up real bad. There's nothing I can do about it. There ain't nothing I can do. God is going to himself going to have to restore it, right? Period. God is himself going to have to do it. But I can't be like, oh, I'm human. Ain't nobody perfect. No. No. You messed up. And at all the people... Everybody looking at you because you kept claiming Jesus. You cannot keep self-justifying things with I'm human. Everybody makes mistakes. Ain't nobody perfect. No, get some discipline about yourself. Stop talking. Watch your mouth. Stop lying. Leave people alone. Come from out of circles that you know you ain't got no business being in. Leave that man alone. Leave that woman alone. Get out their house. Get out their bed. Leave. Stop lying. Stop overspending. Stop. How many, how many times you gonna make the mistake? How many times? How many times you gonna say, I'm just human? How many times? For that one thing. He knows the heart. Oh, this was a good one. I ain't even see this one. Self-degradation. 
pride tears up your pride causes you to tear yourself down. I literally was guilty of that. Didn't even see it. Don't let me fall. Even when this whole thing happens, so when something like this happens or something tragic happens, or just if I this is I, this is why I never like to get in trouble because I just I didn't like it. I never got in trouble for the same thing twice, right? But I hated it. And you know why? I would be so hard on myself and I couldn't, I even now, it, it will keep me up at night. Like if I did something wrong, it bothers me to the point to where I couldn't sleep. I would be so mad at myself. Like you so dumb. Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why would you go there? Why? Like I have to, now I'm aware of it and I, I can catch myself. Self-degration is pride when you tear yourself down because you're created in his likeness and his image according to Genesis chapter 1. Let us make man in our likeness and in our image. When I come into Jesus Christ, I am a new creature recreated in Christ Jesus. So when I tear myself down, that's pride. When I be like, you so dumb, you so stupid, why would you do that? You know better than that. Like, beating myself up. That's a form of pride. Did you know that? I didn't know that either, girl. I, I do this too. I do this. I a form, Listen, y'all. A form of pride. Repent. When you are downgrade in your head, like in your mind, in your heart, yes, when you downgrade who you are, who God created you to be, you are operating in the spirit of pride because you are created in his likeness and in his image. And he's not stupid. He's not dumb. You are a new creature recreated in Christ Jesus. You make a mistake. Repent. Turn. Don't do it no more. But don't degrade yourself. Don't tear yourself down. Don't be so hard on you when it comes to your failures. When you are failing. When, when you make a mistake. This, this part that I wanted to read that was in the thing that I was studying, it said a suicidal person is prideful. He has other thoughts, helplessness, hopelessness, and worthlessness, and painful emotions, but he is also prideful because you think you are so self-centered that nothing else in your life matters. The life that God given you has given you you think you have the right to end it. You don't go to the Father and say, Lord, help me. I'm dealing with these issues. I'm hopeless. I'm helpless. I feel worth, worth, worthless. You try to end it all. Without allowing God to show you who he created you to be. Listen to this one, y'all. This one got me too. The last two got me. Self-demotion. When you try to... Mm, basically demote yourself from what God has called you to be. When you say, Lord, I don't want to do that. When you say, mm-mm, get somebody else to do it. When God has called you to a thing, but you don't want to do it, you really just like, you. do you know that's pride? When, when, when you tell God, that you don't want to do something that he told you to do. I I got like the fear of the Lord came up on me like. Who do I think I am? Who do I think I am telling God that I don't want to do this? I don't want to do what you call me to do. I want to do this. So if you got some real parents. 
You don't. You didn't never tell your parent what you didn't want to do. You got your behind in there and you did whatever they told you to do. That's the same kind of fear that we need to have from God. Because who are we? When you try to self-demote yourself from a position or uh, a place that God has promoted you to. Because he says, I will put one down and I will put one up. I will open up doors and no man can shut. Like he gives us all of these opportunities. He puts us in these places. And then we all try to self-demote. You also degrade yourself because you may not feel like you're good enough. You may not feel like you're the smartest person. You talk yourself out of this. And you forget that you serve the King of Kings, the, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the heavens and earth, the one that who created you, the one who called you, the one who equipped you, anointed you for the position. You, you, you don't remember or you forget that it's because of him that you are here. Self-condemnation. I'm good for this one too. Condemning yourself. Self-condemnation or condemnation is a form of pride. Period. When you self-condemn or you walk in a place of condemnation, what is it, Romans chapter 12? Let's see. Oh, there's the one scripture I was looking for. Hold on, we'll read that one. Um, I was looking for the one that down there, there now there is no condemnation to them that walk not after the flesh. Let's see. Romans 8. Romans 8, 1 through 4. Romans 8, 1 through 4. Um, well, I'm just going to read one. Verse 1. There, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There is no condemnation. And so when you walk into, unless you're walking in the flesh, and if you're walking in the flesh, you're still in a place of pride somewhere in your life, right? Because we are called to walk after the spirit, put the deeds of the flesh to death, basically. We are called to crucify. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It's not I, but it is the Christ that lives on the inside of me. So we are called to crucify our flesh, our emotions, our will, and we are called to walk after the Spirit. When you walk after the Spirit of God, there is now no condemnation. And so when you're walking in a place of condemnation, you're also walking in a place of pride. Ain't that good? All these different areas of pride. That God was showing me and dealing with me about matters of the heart. And he said what I'm coming for. Um, Romans 12 and 3. As, and this is going back to the other one when I was saying, which, which one was I on? Self-degradation. For I say through, was it that one? For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is um, among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man a measure of faith. And so I was, that can go back to the one I was telling you in Ephesians about the grace that no one should boast because it's by his grace. But we should also not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. We should think soberly, soberly, have a sober mind. Because God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. Every one of us has a different measure of faith. And so where your faith may be strong in some, stronger than mine in some areas, 
you still shouldn't think exalt yourself or think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Don't self-exalt yourself. Remember, is that it's by God's grace, and it's according to the measure of faith that He's given each and every one of us. Okay. So we went over some things related to pride. I'll send out my notes here in a little bit. So if you want the notes, click the link in my bio. Make sure you subscribe with your email address. Um, Self-exaltation. We talked about that. Self-promotion. Self-justification. Self-degradation. Self-demotion. Self-condemnation. All forms of pride. All forms of pride. And what was pride again? It meant haughtiness, arrogance, a disdainful attitude towards others, overestimating ourselves and underestimating others. Pride. God said this is an issue of the heart. It's a matter of the heart and I'm coming for it. Proverbs 16, uh, was it 16? Yep. Yeah. Proverbs 16 18, uh, and 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If this is going to be the year of promotion and elevation to help us prepare for the things to come, you don't want to receive your elevation or your promotion and then destruction or the fall happens. Because we refuse to deal with the matter of the heart, matters of the heart, the issue of pride. Okay? You, 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 don't, you don't want to receive your promotion. And then God has to deal with the matters of your heart. Let him deal with the matters of the heart. Let him deal with your matters. We are coming, dealing with the issues and the matters of the heart. You can read Mark chapter 7. Verse 20 through 23 talks about everything that comes up out of the man. And then whatever God highlights to you out of these things, do a research. Like I did a word a study on pride. I looked it up. Yours may be something different. Yours may be evil thoughts. Yours may be adultery. Yours may be fornication. Yours may be theft covetousness, wickedness, blasphemy, foolishness. This is what's defiling us. Matters of the heart. So, Mark chapter 7, verse 20 through 23. Whatever God highlights to you, study it, repent on it, ask God to bring healing, ask God to bring deliverance, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining. I'll be back this what's this week? This is Thursday, right? I'll try to come back Saturday. If I don't, I'll start fresh next week. So my plan is to do Monday, Wednesday, and maybe Friday or Saturday. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, at least three to four days a week in prayer. I mean, um, in the evenings, and then I may do a couple of mornings of prayer. But I haven't worked that out yet. However, if you want to stay updated on all things Christy Pride, all things Arise and Shine, click the link in my bio. Subscribe with your email address because I will send an email when I'm going to be live, what's coming up, what we have next, and things like that. So subscribe with your email address, okay? Follow me on YouTube at Christy Pride. Once we're done, I'll get the video uploaded and it'll be there on the playlist called Matters of the Heart. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I, again, I apologize for being two days late. What am I, two days or three days late? But I really love you guys. Thank you all for joining and um, listening to my testimony. All of this is to me first. God got me first. He's still dealing with me. So just because you see me on here one night and I teach you God ain't done, he is not, he's not done with me by far. Do you hear me? He's still dealing with me on all these issues. But one thing, your girl... Is, is, is good for and saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I don't want to do it. And I'm not just saying, forgive me. I'm trying to make sure I walk in repentance. Because what did we learn about repentance? What is it? It means to turn. It means to have a change of heart, a change of actions, a change of purpose, to change your life. That's what repentance is. Repentance is not just forgive me. 
Repentance changes your life. It changes your purpose. It changes your actions. It changes your heart. It changes your course of action. If you was going left and you start repenting, God will say, okay, now let's go right. Because you ain't going that way no more. So repentance is to change, to transform. Okay? That's what repentance is. All right. I love y'all with the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you guys so much for the hearts, for the gifts, for the shares. I appreciate y'all. And subscribe to my email address or watch my stories because I'll pop I'll post it in my stories of when I'll go live, okay? You guys have an amazing night, and I'll see y'all back here soon.